going? Yeah. How are we? Good. Good, yeah, it's one person, that's great. So my name's Russell, I'm from Manchester. Someone dropped a plate at that, thank you. It's fine, you don't need to do that. The only reason I go back up north these days is that's just to put down on people, really. Do you know what I mean? I live in a nice part of London now, everyone. I've lived in London for 11 years and I live in Chelsea. Yeah, it's fucking posh, isn't it? Chelsea, even our local ketamine dealer wears chinos and a cravat. <laughs> and I don't want to get that horrible northern and move to London attitude, but you do, don't you? Go back up north, people are like, how's London? I'm like, it's great, thanks. How's Greg's? <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to say I've been, you know, I've turned into a complete snob since I moved to the Royal Borough of Chelsea and Kensington. Uh, <laughs> So I was in Manchester the other week, right, for my mum's birthday, and the next day we went to a cafe for a traditional Manchester breakfast. Well, we should not bother. Two pop tarts, a couple of bell birds, and ten Lamberts I was given. <laughs> and I listened, I complained, I said, Excuse me, I live in London now. Do you have the decency to put some avocado on that fucking mess, please? <laughs> hey. the table next was called the waitress over. She said, Excuse me, I'm celiac. She said, Nice to meet you, celiac. My name's Leslie. <laughs> Anyway, listen guys, like a lot of other gays, right, I used to be cabin crew. <coughs> yes, I know. It's good actually, some of my friends still are cabin crew now. Or hookers. Um, <laughs> and that is really good, because it means we can still go out midweek. <laughs> I used to work for a budget airline, I'll let you get, I'll give you a few clues, yeah? It's a bit like Gemma Collins. Very cheap, very irritating, and a very gorgeous shade of orange. <laughs> Please enjoy your lesson. Well, it's actually banging air, but thank you for getting involved, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Good people there. Yeah, so I worked for a, um, a budget airline, right? And something that I learned when I was training for cabin crew, you have to do like six weeks training, everybody. It's very intense. Five of those weeks are just to learn how to sell mini cheddars and scratch cards. <laughs> but right, so when I was doing my training, something I learned, right, as cabin crew, you know when you're on a plane and you're just about to take off? Are you more caravan people? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you, you fly, don't you, yeah? Yeah, you look like a bunch of town liners, right? <laughs> oh, I thought so. Yeah. So you know when you're on a plane and you're just about to take off, right, and the other gays come out to do the safety demonstration? <laughs> <laughs> you know that moment when all those fucking gays fly out to do the safety demonstration? <laughs> and a flock and a gaggle of fucking gays come out just to do the safety demonstration, don't they? They're coming from the overhead lockers, one of the seats, from the bloody emergency exits. It's not much in Chicago on the West End, isn't it? Most of those gays don't even work for the airline, they just come on board just to do the safety demonstration. Right, so you know in the safety demonstration you get told to do by the gays? Yeah, not you lot here, but... Adam, you know the brakes position, yeah? Do you want to do it? Hands overhead. Head in between, in your, between your own legs. Um, <laughs> that's it, kind of. Well, the brace position, right, was never actually designed for your benefit. The brace position was designed to protect your teeth so that if you do crash on landing, you could be identified from your dental records. <laughs> yes, everybody, there's not much point of doing that like, easy jet or Ryanair flight, is there? Most of those passengers don't even have their own teeth, do they? <laughs> It's one of the main reasons why they serve pot noodles on board as well. That's not true. Uh, but listen, cabin crew used to be very glamorous, didn't it? Everyone wanted to be cabin crew. And now, with the rise of the budget airline, any old Sharon and Tracy can do that job, can't they? I used to work with a woman, right, called Paula McGregor. She was from Blackpool with a side pony. Yeah. And, um, right, sometimes on a plane, you'd be in a situation where a larger passenger would come on board and they wouldn't be able to do their seatbelt up, which is fine. Discreetly, you just offer them an extension seatbelt, yeah? Fine. Not Paula McGregor from Blackpool with a side pony. Oh. No, that bitch would march up to the front of the cabin, wait till everyone was sat down and make an announcement. <laughs> if anyone needs a fat belt, put your hands up now! <laughs> fat belt, can you believe it? And then you've got these three like rolling ponies at the back of the bed. Three fat belts, please! <laughs> I'm more Pringles, thank you. <laughs> I got sacked from cabin crew. <laughs> That's my reaction as well. I got 
that's that, that everyone. No, but honestly, it was really unfair, to be honest with you. It was something that's blown out of all proportion to do with leaving a door open. <laughs> I should have gone to tribunal, actually. No one died. And they would walk again, apparently. But it's fine, though, because now that the comedy's going really well, I, um... Well, I work in a restaurant now, so... <laughs> full time! So that just shuts it all, doesn't it? But the restaurant I'm working is also in Chelsea, which is good, because we do tend to get very high quality on lost property. <laughs> very, very lucky this year, actually. Managed to get all my mum and dad's Christmas presents from a lovely boutique I like to call Table 21. <laughs> We all, we're all bored of politics, aren't we, eh? Yeah? I don't talk about them, which you'd be glad, because I just don't know enough about them. I know the basics, like last year it was all to do with Theresa May and her dancing, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm glad we're glad that that woman got rid of her, aren't we? My mum said to me she'd never trust her, her nostrils are too big. <laughs> Did you see them, my right, lady? Did you? If you didn't let me tell you, I wouldn't want to share a grammar code with that fucking bitch. <laughs> So listen, I'm gonna turn, it's my birthday in January, right? I'm gonna be 38. Fuck's yeah. sake. Gays look younger than normal people, don't they? <laughs> they do, don't they? I think it's because we don't have the stress of kids and stuff like that, but my hands are full with the gluten-free shit soon. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to be 38. Can you believe it's not old, is it? No. Oh no, it isn't gay years, honestly. Gay years are like dog years, everybody. I was in a gay bar not long ago and a younger gay got up and offered me a seat. <laughs> I said I'm alright, thank you. I'm just about to come up on my MDMA actually, but thank you very much. <laughs> no, I'm gonna be 38, yeah. And I am starting to feel a bit old. Give me a cheer of all the other 35s in the room. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, see if you can all like relate to this. What makes me feel old? When I now start to hear songs that I used to take drugs to. <laughs> now we you to advertise next. <laughs> You know the one, don't you? And it feels like yesterday I was dancing around and enjoying a little K-hole to have away what is love. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I'm in Matalan on a Saturday afternoon buying beige sensible trousers to it. And it's not just any old shade of beige, is it, that we wear when we're the older gentleman? A very specific shade of beige known as hearing aid beige. <laughs> All the under 25s give me a cheer. <laughs> Yeah, he definitely grew up in a polluted area, didn't he? <laughs> right, listen, so you might say, so you can, what makes me feel old, right? In work, we have the radio on, and I don't have a clue who anyone is anymore. You know, Capital FM and like stations like that, yeah? Do a lipper. Do a bastard lipper. <laughs> I honestly thought that was a third world country. <laughs> I said that the other day, this woman said, you're saying it wrong. She said, it's Dua Lipa. I said, I'm sorry, do you want to give a shit? <laughs> Ariana Grande! Ariana Grande, I wrote my resignation letter to Debenhams in the 90s in that font. <laughs> it was only two weeks ago I found out that Justin Bieber wasn't actually a lesbian. <laughs> I was watching the Brits with my mum. My mum says, how the bin bag man wins something? <laughs> she the rag and bone man, didn't she? <laughs> Stupid. She's getting things wrong now. She's 65. I rang her the other day. She said, I can't talk right now. I said, why not, mother? She said, I'm watching my favourite programme. I said, what's that? She said, Martin Luther King, the money-saving expert. <laughs> Stupid. She said to me, I'm not using Facebook anymore. I said, why not, mum? She said, they're stealing my data. <laughs> Data. At the time, she's on Facebook doing a survey called What Type of Fabric Conditioner Am I? <laughs> last year, do you remember last year we had the royal wedding, right? Harry and Meghan's urban wedding. Do you remember everyone said it was urban and diverse, didn't they? Because we had the gospel choir and the preacher man. I'll tell you how urban that wedding was. I was in the living room in Manchester watching it with the sound off. My mum walked in, she thought I was watching Sister Act 2. <laughs> she said, turn it up, I love this bit. <laughs> Anyway, right, before I go, so I was in the gay bar, a young gay says to me, how old are you? I said, I'm 38. He says, all right now, mate, so you turn into a daddy, have you? Daddy? I don't think so. Retarded uncle, maybe, but daddy, no. <laughs> but we have these things in the gay world. We have daddies, we have bears. Do you know what a bear is in the gay world, anyone? 
Do you have any gays in? They're probably at the toilets, aren't they? They usually are. Fucking around the carry bag. Listen, right, so if you don't know what a bear is, before I leave, right, a bear in the gay world is technically just a great big fat hairy gay. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it's fine, they hang around with other bears, they like to be called bears, mainly in shaded areas and the woods. But now, right, because we're all in the millennium, aren't we? Yeah? Everybody, because we're all in the millennium, aren't we? There's so many fucking gays in the world now, so the population of gays have increased, so the population of bears have increased, right? So to tackle this, the bears have had to give themselves subcategories just to identify themselves. Call a bear, anybody? Very old, big fat hairy gay. <laughs> Uncut, no. Panda, uh, very tired, big fat hairy gay, very fucking tired. Probably not all night, women another pole now. Anyway, right, I need to go now, everybody. Before I go, I have just got engaged to my boyfriend after 11 years. Old. We've just got a, we have just got a little group of shit scene together. And they say dogs turn in their owners, don't they? Little Billy's just like me. He's got big googly eyes, he's very independent. And when he sees strangers in the park for the first time, he goes straight for the anal hole. Enjoy the rest of your evening, thank you very much, have a good day.